Hi, I'm Anne. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> Hey friends, happy Wednesday. This is start two of today's live show because Marie forgot to turn off her phone notifications, but now that's done. So hopefully you're not going to hear your ears chiming off. And we have a small crew today because it's summer vacations and stuff like that. Ooh. Kayla's with us and she is going to uh, show you her show and tell as soon as she gets off the phone <laughs> with somebody. What do you want to tell anybody right now today, Anne? Well, I just want to do a shout out to Joanne Stratakos of Mudworks Pottery in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, we got to speak by phone today and it's, it's always lovely getting to speak to all of our felting friends by phone and just you guys brighten up our day. You really do. <laughs> For sure. And it was so fun this last week having 16 of our friends here in our brand new space. It was such a way to kick off the space, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, so we haven't even been here a month yet, have we? We're not I even think so. No, we haven't even been in the space a month. And we had 16 of our BFFs here for uh, Kiyoshi's three day workshop, plus Kiyoshi was here. So it was really comfortable. It was really fun, huh? It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, enough room for everybody to have lunch and everybody to felt and move around and people to shop at the same time. And honestly, we couldn't have asked for a better, what's it called when you christen a ship? Is it like a it's, christen a, is it called christening? Yeah. yeah, when you yeah, finish the bottle. Yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> That's what it felt like. It felt like a really, like our friends helped us bless our space and sort of celebrate this new chapter. So we just want to say thank you to everybody who came to that workshop. It was just a blast to spend time mm -hmm. with you. And Speedy says hi to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and we just want to thank you all for being here today. So thank you for joining us. Today or this week for our Wooly Wednesday, we put out a challenge to do a fur challenge and a lot of you sent in some great pictures. So what we're gonna do is look at some different ways you might achieve those fur colors. We weren't going for texture per se. Uh, we didn't even clarify actually whether we were gonna look at 2D or 3D. Um, so we're gonna look at a few different photographs and a few different types of fibers and hopefully even if we don't cover the colors in your specific animal, we'll give you some building blocks to work off for how you might blend colors for your own felted version of your fur baby. So uh, we're gonna say hi to some people and then before we jump into that, uh, hopefully Kayla will come back when she has a minute and show us her felted pickle. <laughs> it's totally cute. And um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome to Wooly Wednesday. Say hi and where you're from. You'll see that a lot of our veteran friends are doing that. Who are some of the people that are with us, Anne? We've got Kathy in Minnesota. Brenda in Delaware, Anne in North Carolina, and Beatrice from Spain. Oh, very nice. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. This is how our show works. First of all, if you're on Facebook and you're watching the live show, you can see the bell up in the corner of the chat window. If you hit that, you'll get notified every time we go live. Generally, our show is Wednesdays at 2 o'clock Central. If you're watching the playback on YouTube, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get notified whenever we upload a new video. We usually upload these to YouTube the day after or sometimes sooner if we can and for today what we like to do is have this be an interactive conversation so for everybody who participates in the conversation um, your name goes into a hat and we draw prizes at the end so chime in ask a question maybe share a tip if you have one we're not the be-all end-all we like to really facilitate a conversation and bring people together and ideas together uh, we are a supplier we're based uh, just outside of Austin, Texas in a little town called Dripping Springs. We ship all over the world. We do workshops here. People come here and take classes. And we have this awesome Facebook group right here on Facebook. Just search Living Felt Friends. And that's where this conversation really explodes and where it's often born too. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, and Anne, will you see if Kayla's coming to show her show and tell? Absolutely. <laughs> we'll, see if, we'll see if Kayla's here and we'll say hi to a few more folks. And thank you to everybody who sent in pictures of animals that you want uh, to see a fur challenge for. Anne is going to feed me your questions and your comments as we're working together. And um, hopefully today will help you just feel a little more confident in creating some colors for your own critters. 
Um, so I'll start by just pointing to a couple of things on the set behind me. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with our products, right up here in this corner is our MC1 batting. We make it in like 91 colors, and this, so that's just a small sampling of some of our earth tones, which we'll be looking at today to blend. I also brought um, some Merino Top, some New Zealand Corydale, um, just a range. We have a large range of natural colors of fibers that you might like to work with. There's tons of shades of white, there's tons of shades of gray, and I know that many people are new and don't really know which fibers to work with depending on your project. So maybe today we'll help you see a little difference between some of the main fibers that we carry and how you might work with those. But before we jump into that, I want to bring in our friend Kayla with her felted pickle because show and tells are just so fun. <laughs> <laughs> my felted pickle. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Sorry I wasn't here for the beginning, <laughs> but I made a little magnet out of our MC1 and our felt sheets. It's just a little pickle. <laughs> it's got a little one of our magnets on the back of it with a piece of, I think it's PFX that's yeah. on it, but it's Key Lime, MC1, Evergreen, and little flecks of white just for some highlights on the bumps. <laughs> Yay! <Aww. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we love it. So Kayla said that she's going to be working on a series of food theme magnets for her refrigerator. So maybe after she gets a few more made, I request a hamburger. A hamburger? Okay, yeah, I, I would like a, do that. Be the <laughs> first time I've had a hamburger in a long time. So. <laughs> I'll let Kayla make it for me. Okay, everyone, so here's what we're going to do uh, on our live show. We have two cameras going. We have our live camera. We have our YouTube camera. So we are recording this in high definition. And what we're going to do in just a moment is turn down our cameras so that you can uh, at least have an across the table view of what we're working on today. And before I pull that up, I want to show you my little, um, my little cupcake tier thing here. What I have here is a range of fibers that we'll be looking at. I know it's hard to discern the difference in the colors or the values on the camera, whether you're looking at Pinterest or Etsy or Facebook, all whites tend to look whiter. Um, and sometimes the contrast can be a little bit of a challenge to see. So what I want to tell you is, um, if you're really having a challenge achieving a particular color, if you give us a call or send us an email to customer service at livingfelt.com with your animal or your project that you're working on or a color you're trying to match and tell us how you're making it. Are you needle felting it? Are you wet felting it? Or is it 3D? Is it 2D? We can usually help suggest colors for you. Um, so today we're gonna look at Merino Top, New Zealand Corydale, our MC1 batting, and I might even show you some of these natural shades in alpaca, just so you can see what they look like on the camera. Okay, so before we jump in, anything I should address, Anne? Well, a couple of our felting friends are already wanting to know whether they can incorporate animal hair into that. Oh, sure. Some people do incorporate animal hair, and I think it, sometimes you'll find that it's a little more slick. Uh, sometimes it's a little uh, more soft, but you can also blend blend that hair with other fibers. In fact, today we'll blend some Merino Top and New Zealand Corydale. The Merino Top is a 19 micron, which is very fine, very straight, and the New Zealand Corydale has a bit of a crimp and not as much sheen and it's more coarse, but you can blend them together. And as you'll see with the blends that we make today, make small blends, small test blends, and test your ideas. Test your ideas before you, you know, blend up a whole big batch of something or order tons of something. So absolutely, you can blend those together. Okay, anything else, Anne? Okay, we're gonna turn down the camera and we're gonna look at a few uh, photos together and we're gonna blend up some colors too. So we can just look at some photographs. Now our friends, that's you, sent us some photographs of their critters and some fur colors or shading that you're trying to achieve. And um, some of these I brought and some of these you brought. I'm gonna move these over a little bit. Some of these I brought and some of these you brought. 
So the first thing, or can we see all those, Anne? Fairly okay. Now I have some more. I have this gray kitty, which I hope to get to, and I have this cute Labradoodle. Uh, I think Laura Burke sent in this one. We're not really gonna tackle the texture today, um, but the first thing I wanna get you to think about is, um, are you doing 2D or 3D? Uh, we might suggest different fibers, depending on your comfort of working with different fibers. And um, also, what are the colors you see here? And maybe just ask yourself, what similarities do you see across all of these photos? We put out a challenge to our group asking for fur challenge colors. And there were over 70 responses, I think, and people submitting different animal photos. We chose a couple that were really clear uh, that we could see really well. Can you see okay? All right. And what I want to point out is that there are a lot of colors that are really similar animal to animal. We see often um, white, beiges, blonde, what we would call blonde colors. Something's going towards orange and something going towards golden colors. Black, black browns, um, golden browns. So what I'm going to encourage you to do on whatever animal image you're working on. You'll notice that I took some of the images we received and just cropped them down and made them a little more simple. So try and get, uh, this one I think came from Jeanette Fedorka, try and get a really sharp, high resolution, crisp image of your critter. If you're doing 2D, this is really important and try and get a really good image of their eye. We're not touching on that today, but you wanna see their eye really clearly if you're doing a 2D. It would be very difficult to do a, a very impressive 2D of this dog because you can't really see his eyes or his face all that well. So if you're doing 2D, get the absolute best image you can. But also, if you have a photo printed out of your critter or you can really blow it up on your tablet or computer, you're gonna start to see these values a little better. I print photos at Walgreens all the time. It's fast, it's cheap, and I do it so that I can have a really strong reference. So that's my encouragement. So if you see your animal on this table, I want to propose that no matter which critter I jump to, we are going to tackle some of the shades in your animal with our blending. And we're going to try and get as much done as we can today as possible, and we're going to use different fibers to do it. Okay? All right, I'm gonna start with this little calico kitty right here, um, who actually, this calico kitty and this kitty actually have some very similar hues. But I'm gonna tackle calico kitty with our MC1 batting, which I've stacked up all behind me. Uh, let me see if I can grab this right here. What? I challenge you to look at on your critter is start by looking at what you see as like a middle tone or a middle color. This is our MC1 caramel. And I can't quite uh, see exactly what your eyes see, but give us a thumbs up or a heart if you can kind of see this color in this kitty. This is called caramel. I'm gonna put caramel off to the side just for a second. And what I have over here is my little tree that I showed you a moment ago. It's just sitting off to the side. I'm going to put it off to the side and I'm going to pull. I don't think you can see it, so I'll move Kitty over. I'm going to pull from this tree. Uh, and this is caramel right here. So the first thing I'd say is start with a color that makes sense to you. And you kind of feel like you can find that in the photo. That we're, we're catching up and so we're getting a lot of hearts and a lot of thumbs up in response to the caramel. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, Ann. All right. So caramel is like a nice middle tone, but there's three things I see happening here and I would recommend this caramel. You could use it if you're going to have your kitty in 2D, even if you want to make it look furry. Or if you want to go 3D like my little kangaroo here and you don't want to deal with long fur, this guy is covered with MC1 and no long fur. So the MC1 batting will needle felt nice and smooth no matter what you're doing. But what we want to do is take this towards the golden, towards the brown, uh, so towards the gold, a little more golden shades, 
maybe a little more towards the brown and some of these little deep areas here. And uh, we might take it towards the beigey, really soft, and we wanna take it a little bit towards the rust. So let's just tackle that right now. If you're ready, give us a thumbs up. Here's what I usually like to do is I'm gonna start with some amount of caramel and whatever's the color I wanna blend and start with a 50-50 blend. Just eyeball that, don't worry about it too much. Just blend 50% and 50% of those two colors. Put one on top of the other. You can peel this one in half and just do a couple of peels so that you have the colors alternating and then just pull through. Restack and pull through. Restack and pull through. If the fibers start peeling up on you or tearing, you're just holding them too tightly and too closely, and that means you're actually tearing the staple. The staple is that length of the fiber. A staple is like a length of the fiber itself. So you don't wanna tear it and shred that. You just wanna blend. So all we're doing now is taking caramel to a little more of the golden tones or highlight tones. And y'all, Anne's just gonna interrupt me with a statement or a question. Our building friends are wanting to know whether um, we'll tackle the texture and actual application of the fur in another Wooly Wednesday. In a 2D or a 3D? Uh, both. Oh, okay. Well, texture in a 3D is just going to be applying it, you know, but I will comment on curly fur uh, in a little bit for a 3D. Um, but for 2D, um, I'm gonna encourage you probably to get Danny Ives' book. We could do it, but I'm still gonna encourage you to do it. And maybe we should do a, you know, try and do a picture or something together. But it's gonna be how you put down the fiber. Okay, so right away now, we have our caramel, and now we have a little more of a golden tone there for our caramel. So does that resonate with you, what I just did? That you can see a little more of a golden tone? I'm gonna reach over here and I'm gonna grab a little bit of pumpkin spice, which is very orangey. And I am going to blend it with straight caramel. So give me a thumbs up if you like that golden tone that we just made. Steady stream of thumbs up. Okay, cool. Now, I have pumpkin spice. Uh, so this right here, this is pumpkin spice and this is cinnamon brown. So pumpkin spice, you can see, is a little bit hot, but still very earthy, and I'm gonna blend that a little bit, just straight with the caramel. That will take us a little bit towards the orange. So same process as before. We're just stacking and restacking and pulling and stacking. The thing with doing 50-50 blends is it gives you a nice, uh, you always know sort of how you started and then you can add, you know, 25% more of one color or um, migrate even in a different direction, but, you know, or add a third color if you first just start with a 50-50. So now this is just a little bit towards the orangey, but I would like to take it a little bit darker for some of these, uh, some of these real strong points here. So what I might do is reach towards chestnut. This is chestnut, this is dark chocolate, and this is espresso, whoops, espresso brown, well I'll show you that too. This is espresso bean, and this is clay. So clay is a little more towards, you know, the red, but it's a real soft muted color. And what you might do is once you have this blend, and you can make your little recipes like this without making up a whole bunch just to see if you like what's happening. I'm gonna take a pinch of chestnut and blend it with this caramel pumpkin spice blend just to take this color a little bit darker. Awesome, Kathleen says that looks right on. <laughs> cool. You know, and I'm kind of far away. You can nerd out and spend as much time as you want dialing these in. What I would suggest is you know, take notes if you need to while you're blending it and make at least a little sandwich baggie full so you have enough to save that you can reference back. Save a little sandwich bag and write on a piece of paper and shove it in that sandwich bag what it is that you made. Now this color is getting, it might be a little bit brown. You can always go back and add a little more of the, I'm gonna add a little more of the pumpkin spice. 
just to make it a little more red. So we wanted the chestnut to darken it, but we still want it to be a little towards the red. Now, reds are kind of a challenge. They can be, but this is more like a little bit of a rest. And I think that that probably, and it's, you can leave it chunky or you can make it really homogenous. Um, you don't have to blend it 100%, 100%. Uh, and you can keep blending little variations of that. But let's actually take the golden to a little more blonde. Let's take this golden one that we made to a little more blonde. And I'm going to use cotton white, which is a natural white. Um, actually, the first thing I'm going to use is linen. I'm going to use linen first to show you. You don't always have to jump straight to white white. So this is our cotton white. It's going to look super white on your monitor because we have lights here on the set. So it's going to look very white. Uh, and next to it is linen, which is just a real light beige. So you don't always have to jump to white. And this is not the brightest white we sell. And I would encourage you to save the brightest bright whites for something like a dot in the eye. Some, sometimes you can even do aspen gray or something for that or cotton, but save the brightest whites because um, those of you who are trying to achieve variation in a white, start with softer whites. And we're, when we look at the gray kitty, I think you'll be, um, the gray kitty, you'll see how we might get some tones for him or her. So this is just that original uh, blend we did, which was mango and caramel together. And we're making it a little more blonde without jumping to the white. So maybe you can see how that might fit in this picture, maybe in here. Seem okay? So we have made here, we took one solid. Oh, this is the blended solid. I've already blended it all up. So we took one solid, I think. Oh, uh, no, that's it. So we took caramel. We made it more golden. We made it more blonde. We made it a little more red. And we made it even a little more rusty. And that's a great big range to work on for this picture if you're doing this kitty. When you're doing blacks, and this, this picture, if you're doing a 2D, doesn't have a whole lot of highlights in it. But if you're doing blacks, we have a real nice range of blacks and grays. Um, so this is, I'll try and show you on the camera. This is our black onyx. This right here, I'll turn it this way, is coal. Might be hard to see the difference, but there is a value difference between those two. This is called River Rock, which is actually lighter, and then Slate. So we do have a real nice range of blacks and grays for you to work with. You can also blend them to get different values. And if you're going for highlights on whether it's fur or in an eye or something, think about trying a blue and blend it with whatever value you're in. And rather than just go gray, you might find that sometimes those highlights on black fur goes a little bit towards the blue. And I probably have an example. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing a gray. There we have uh, Aspen right there, which is we'll work with in just a second. So I wanted to show you that range, even though it might not show up perfectly on your monitor. How are we doing, Ann? We're doing good. Paula asks, how much would you blend once you find a, a color that you like? How do you calculate the amount of each color? That's a really good question. And so, uh, like, if I'm doing a little 2D picture, I think a 2D picture, the wool goes a lot further than it seems like. But I'm going to make a sandwich bag stuffed, and I will not let myself run out without reblending. So just don't let yourself run out without reblending. Always save back some for your reference, and then you'll be in a pretty good shape. Um, I want to jump to this guy, if that's okay. This golden, which somebody suggested uh, that we might do. Um, if Does everyone feel okay to move on, you think? Yeah, okay. So with this golden, we could work with some of these same fibers, although I'm going to switch. But can you see some of the same fibers or same shades that we've already blended for the kitty in this same guy? 
maybe going this, this some of these might be a little yellow and we might go a little bit towards the the beige or the sandy color but can you see those in him kind of do they seem to show up and saying yeah so i want to propose that there's not hundreds of you know colors out there what we do want to do though is i'm going to look at how you get to some of these beigey tones now we could do it with the mc1 i'll just do this real quick and then we'll jump to another color this is sand mc1 and i think you might think oh well look that's a little more towards that color for this guy right there and if you want it to be that sand to be a little bit darker you could blend sand with some clay mc1 clay which is this reddish color i showed you so if you blend sand and clay you can even get another value. And I'm gonna change fibers uh, here in a minute, but I wanna show you, same on the MC1 line, that you can get beigey with it as well. And what do you got? See, Linda shares uh, purples with black work well too. Uh, I agree, I agree with that. And I have, a, I'll share a picture or two of my needle felted dogs and I used, I used indigo in the eye actually, which is like a purpley blue for us. So here's just a little bit uh, darker version to work with. So the MC1 is real easy to blend. You just keep blending until you have, you know, the right blend that you want and you can just go all day. You can go browns, you can go golds, you can go reds and that's kind of what we have here. So browns, golds, reds if you kind of think of them that way and you can keep going in any direction and change those values so let's look at if you're working with something like um, well it could be merino top or new zealand like if you want to do this dog so for the moment i'll put my mc1 down you might want to work with long fibers on a 3d sculpture some people do you might want to um, Work with long fibers on your picture. Some people prefer that. So uh, often people jump straight to a white and blend from there. Often with dogs like this, we start with, um, <laughs> if y'all can hear that, our neighbors are building. So uh, there's that. <laughs> often we start with something like a camel for a golden. So let's say we're looking at these beigey tones right there. This is our New Zealand Coriadale, which has a little bit of crimp to it. You can blend it with New Zealand Coriadale, or you could blend it with Merino Top if you want it to have a little bit of a sheen. So what I think I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just blend this guy with whatever I feel inspired at the moment. So there's some camel, and I'm going to blend him with some natural New Zealand white. I, again, this is probably looks way more white on your computer than it really is. So you don't want to be fooled by that. I'm going to do another about 50-50 blend, the white and the camel, just so we can go a little more towards the blonde. Now what you'll notice is this is a lot longer of a fiber. It's three to four inches long, sometimes longer. The micron is higher. It's 27 to 32. That means if you're using it for a sculpture, it will hold up a little bit more to handling than merino top will. Merino top is so fine that if your sculpture gets handled a lot, it's gonna to tend to mat down a little bit more. This might also lend itself to a little more of a fluffy look if that's what you're going for. Um, if you're doing it on a picture, you might also get a little more texture out of it too. But Merino Top and New Zealand Coriadale are both interesting to use on a 3D sculpture. So I've made this and now I actually want to take it just a pinch lighter and we're actually going to go towards the golden also. What do you got, Anne? Let's see. Cheryl asks, when you're blending, are you trying to keep the fibers going all the same way? I am, yes, because you want them to be organized when you're working with them. So I'm, I am just pulling them through, stacking them, and pulling them through. That is my goal. I want to keep them all organized. And Sharon asks, do you prefer using MC1 over Top or Coriadale for 2D portraits, or do you like to use a mix-up? I usually use our MC1 batting because I'm going for a real flat finish on my 2D portraits, and I will show you a couple of those once I get a little of this blended. So here we have straight camel, 
And here we have more just the blonde, like you might see down here, just a little bit lighter. But let's take it a little towards the golden. So I'm gonna grab some more camel. We'll build straight off of that particular one. And one of the first things we can do, actually let's take it towards the red. This is uh, copper, right, Anne? Copper. Uh, oh, not copy. copper. Toffee, sorry. I don't know why I think. It matches copper in merino top. So merino top, copper, New Zealand toffee. So let's blend these two guys together just to take this camel a little more towards the red. Again, just start small, especially if you're adding a really dominant color. And just blend them together. Pull, pull, pull. It's nicer to blend merino top because it's shorter. <laughs> it's just a little more pleasant. But this stuff will make a real nice, a real nice textured coat if that's what you're going for because it does have a nice crimp and it is a little bit coarse. So I'm gonna blend it just a little more and just keep going until you're happy. Like I said, you can make one blend real homogenous and let one bent blend be a little more stripy. Just whatever appeals to you for your critter because animals aren't one color and that's what happens most often is we try and just put down one color rather than make a blend to, to let it come to life. So here we go. I'm gonna go, this goes a little towards the light and now we're going a little towards the red. So let me know if you, do you agree? Do you feel like you can see these colors a little bit in this dog? Linda says, yep, held that up to my dog and it's a perfect blonde. <laughs> cool. And now I'm actually going to add a little bit of this uh, color, which is called butterscotch, to the camel. Butterscotch and camel go well together uh, for just getting a dog that's a little more golden. And you may not see it in this guy, but sometimes it also depends on how your picture is printed out. If you print out your picture at home and not on great paper, the colors are going to look maybe a little lighter. Um, lighter even more highlighted or more muted than they really are so blending butterscotch and camel together can work to bring something just a little more golden so that is, this is very golden compared to this dog that i have here but let's see what happens if i add a little bit of the red to this to this little golden blend and oh by the way you can add white to that too So don't be stuck with one color. Blend these colors together. Like to me, this, this one really comes to life where we have, we have the camel, the red, and the golden all together. Like that is just a great mix because you, you can use it in certain spots even if you don't use it throughout. Now, you may not see these colors in this guy. This guy, you might just see more beigey and then you might even take this bit a little bit more towards the brown. Uh, did I bring New Zealand brown? I have some dyed New Zealand brown and we also have, let me show you these, we have dyed New Zealand brown and we have natural dark brown. This is natural dark brown and you might be able to see it has some veining and heathering in it which is usually like a gray, it almost looks silvery white but that's really how it comes off the sheep and then this is dyed brown if you're looking for a real solid chocolate. So just for fun, I'm going to use the natural brown with this and blend a little bit in there. There are places in the coat of your animal where you really, you don't want that stark, stark solid, but you need the color that you're working with to look uh, like it has some dark undertones. And sometimes the best thing to do is just to put them all together. And if it feels like you have too much, well then just keep, keep blending or add, you know what I mean, add more and keep blending. So I'm gonna put this down. See what happens when we take that a little bit dark. And maybe you can see where you would use that, maybe in the neckline here without adding a solid color, you would use something like this that's a little, just a little bit richer, a little more shadowed. What do you think, Ann? Does it show up okay? It does, yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting because you can't see like the 
full like the the details of the color but you can see it matching on the you can see the values match on the photo cool okay any questions or comments there before i jump to another critter This guy is similar, by the way. Uh, you know, these darks, you might, you might blend these darks with something like the camel. You can see where this goes a little to the reddish, you know, so you're gonna wanna take something a little closer to this here. Let me just hold this up for this guy's, just this little part on his muzzle. See how it's a little more red? Does that kind of show up? In MC1, I would use cinnamon with sand, pumpkin spice with sand, pumpkin spice with a little bit of sand or clay uh, to blend that, to get to that value. So I wanna see if that shows up for you. Well, we have time I wanna to jump to Gray Kitty and I wanna use Merino Top. Oh, let's see, I do have two things I wanna show you actually. We'll jump to Gray, gray Kitty and um, because I wanna use Merino Top, but I also wanna show you for those who have a real chestnut colored critter, I wanna suggest something that might be a little out of the box. So this is Gray Kitty. Love this beautiful, I forget whose picture this was. Ian, did I save that there? Whose picture that is? That's yeah, not seeing it. I, I, I thought I saved, I forget whose gray kitty this is, but someone in the group brought us this gray kitty. Um, so this is Merino Top. This is the, the range and values of Merino Top. I'm just gonna run over them real quick. Um, this is Ebony. This one is Seal. This here is Charcoal, Slate, Mist. But I'm throwing in here Sand Dollar which is, uh, in our whites, we have lily white, really white, bright white, white sand, which is natural how it comes off the sheep. And again, this may not show up on your screen. We have French vanilla, which looks like a lot of natural whites and ecru. And then we have white sand, which is definitely towards the beige. For this kitty, I chose white sand because we want to blend in some of these grays. And he looks really beigey in here and really muted and not a bright white. I thought I had some. Okay. What you need? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is my white sand, yeah? Yeah. Okay, this is the white sand. It's very beigey. So. I'm uh, sorry, sand dollar. This is sand dollar, which is very beigey. So I'm gonna blend sand dollar. You could use sand dollar by itself and you can definitely use the white sand for these whitest parts. Um, but I'm gonna blend sand dollar with mist. to get some of these tones. And I hope this will show up. I know it's kind of hard, all these whites on the camera, but this is Merino Top. And I just wanted to throw it out there. There are people who like to needle felt with Merino Top, uh, whether it's a top coat in a 3D sculpture or in pictures, um, or if, even if you're wet felting. And Kiyoshi is one who likes to needle felt with Merino Top. I always love when an artist comes and does something a little bit different than someone else because it just it just reemphasizes that there really are no rules and you can do things in so many so many different ways. So this might be hard to see, but these are pretty beigey tones, beigey and gray tones that would work well in this kitty down here. Does that kind of show up, Anne? Does it show up on the on the the screen? I don't think. I don't have a gray or something to, to show it against. I can try and peel back the foam a little bit. I mean this. Take any, any suggestions to, to show it better. Just need to see whether, does that show up? Can you see that? 
It does. Do you mind pointing with your finger where on the on the picture of the cat? Oh, down here. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. where you're Perfect. going for here. Perfect. It's not white. It's not cream. It's not gray. It's a mixture, and it's not a real homogeneous mixture. So you're going to get some of those natural shadows right away, and then you can add some of your own too. So let me pull this. Maybe it's easier to see that one off of the white, and you can then actually take this one, which is slate, um, uh, this is, and mist, and you can you can darken mist or lighten slate, whatever whatever feels right. In this cat, um, some of these more bluey grays actually would work really well, and even blend them with black. Our filming friends are saying, yep, looks good, uh, great match. And MC1, as I pointed out, we have lots and lots of grays to choose from, but um, so far we're, we're looking at our third different type of fiber to work with, and you can um, you can mix and match too, but it's going to be easier to do a long fiber with a long fiber. Uh, I didn't bring any black in to blend with that, but then you can take this to the black. Do you want me to grab some black? Black also. A black merino, or you can take a pinch off of one of those. Why don't you give me like, not black, but the, the nope. next one. Yeah. We're going to do seal instead of, instead of black. So much, there's so many places you can go here. Thank you, Anne. Absolutely. Yeah, so seal is not quite black and it's going to be a, a great gradation to work with. So there's, there's value in having more colors than you think you need and what happens is you find that you can intermix them really well. You know, can, you can just keep making your own blends depending on what you're making. So, and this really brings it to life too because our hair isn't just one color unless we get it dyed at the salon. <laughs> and even then, sometimes we pay for expensive highlights, right? Because we don't want it to all be solid. Um, so let's see if I put that there, if you can kind of start to, to see. There's some fun uh, values and gradations in there if you don't make it all homogenous and you're gonna get a lot out of it right away. So that was just darkening this. We haven't even blended these two guys. And I want to show one more thing, but I'm gonna blend these two guys just a pinch darker. Um, so you can see one other thing in the middle. But I'm gonna suggest something for those who are going for the chestnuts if you're, if you're looking for a longer fur. So I'm gonna show that to you next. And Greta asks, how would you deal with a fur that is tipped? That is one color yeah. on the shaft, another on the other. Uh, yeah, I, you, it's, it's a challenge. Like Kiyoshi showed us how he does spots, and I think that's really interesting. But, I mean, it, you're not going to be able to get the same exact effect. You're going to have to put one color underneath the other, you know, and you'd have to spot it in. Just like here on the muzzle where you have this little bit of spotting, you would want to, you know, have these this peppering going on, and then you could come back and tuck in some little spots. So... I know my rat terriers have, t one of them had a lot of ticking on his, on his tummy and they're almost like spots that you can put fur over. And you might look at doing something like that, like making a spot and putting some fur over it. Or having a shorter spot. You know, like having a shorter spot if you're working with the longer fur, because you can cut this fiber and so you can have a shorter spot with some longer fur coming out of it. It's an idea. I haven't really done that. Okay? Is that, is that helpful? Y'all yeah. think that's good? Okay, so I want to, because I need all the reinforcement. I need y'all to tell me I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm going to show you something a little out of the box, and I don't have a supporting picture. Um, let's see here. I can grab all my, my, I've been piling all my mess down here. So for people who are trying to get a chestnut, a chestnut color, in your breeds. I know it's a real challenge and actually I was working with a lady here at the workshop uh, this week who had a chestnut challenge and um, for that one I suggested uh, Surrey Alpaca which is a real natural beautiful red but there's a lot of variegation in that and these are blends that I have made that I wanted to suggest if you're trying to go for more of that red auburn 
chestnut coat and you want it to be a longer fiber. Our chestnut is pretty nice, but it's still a more towards the, uh, the brown. You might need to redden that. But if you're going more towards the red, I hope I brought them in here. I thought I did. Okay, this is what I've used. I've used um, copper, milk chocolate, and wine. Bordeaux. Thank you. Bordeaux. Okay, so this was to go more towards a reddish coat. So if you're looking for a longer fur, maybe play with this. Like I said, it's a little out of the box, but see what you think. So the first thing I did is I just took a little copper and a little milk chocolate. I didn't want to go dark, dark, dark and blend those to get a little more of a actually a reddish, even though it's a, a, a soft red with a copper into the brown mix those two together and it brings the brown to life and gives you some natural highlights, meaning highlights already running through your blend that weren't there a second ago. And it takes, it's, you know, it's, it takes time to do, to get a little more homogenous blend on your own. So spend your time and just get those and get those blended. But you can see right there how that kind of takes it towards a little more towards the golden and you can actually um, add more brown if you want it to be a little bit darker. So we're just going to do this real fast. I'll leave him there. Add a little more brown and then we're going to go red. So I'm going to add just a little more brown in here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we've got this bread, uh, this brown milk chocolate and copper mixed together. It's kind of like this guy, but if you add a little Bordeaux, I mean just a little to start and see how you like it. Don't make it too strong or it's gonna be real streaky. Just blend it through over and over and really hide it within the mix. So I don't even think it was a 10%, you know, maybe it was like a 5% mix and you want to blend it until it no longer stands out as its own color. So this is sort of a medium tone right there. That's like a medium chestnut. And if you want to take it even further and get it a little more towards the auburn, then keep adding a little bit more of that. But so we went from copper and brown um, to get like this tone and then you can keep going a little bit further and make it a little more red. I'm just going to add a pinch here to this one and this again is for people who are shooting for like that chestnut. It's outside the box, it's not real, you know, you may not agree and that's okay too but I wanted to suggest that you could potentially make your own color if you can't find it in a natural fiber because the chestnut I have found is one of the hardest colors to get um, straight up dyed. It's such a natural auburn and it has its own variegations in it. So here we go. That is my homemade chestnut color. What do you think? A wonderful Kim shares. I never would have thought to add Bordeaux. I think it kind of gets there a little bit, you know, it gets you closer to that chestnut. So for those who have shared some pictures with us online, I just want to suggest that you might give that a try um, because it's definitely redder than brown, right? But it's not, it's not super dark. You can even add a dark chocolate in there if you want to just take it to be a little bit richer. But um, there's, yeah, three shades right there. Was there anything else I was going to do? Was that it? Do we do okay? Oh, do y'all feel like this was helpful? Yes, oh, oh I'll tell you what, I've got two, one minute, two minutes. I'm going to show, um, I'm going to show something super, super fast because we kind of got started a little bit, a little bit late. So we talked about um, blues and purples uh, for highlights, um, blues and purples for highlights. And um, this guy was a black and white challenge, kind of a challenge for me. Y'all know realism is not my strength. Um, so this guy, along with the grays, has some blues in these highlights. So 
This is all made with our MC1 batting. No other fiber is used. And the background I just filled in with MC1. He's just done on one of our wool felt squares. So um, pick a real simple subject and have fun with it. And But I think the black and whites, I, personally, I find that they're very challenging. This was one of the first ones that I did. He's done on our MC1 batting. Um, again, you can see the use of the caramel along with browns, along with adding some of the mangoes to get the highlights. And in uh, his eyes, there's definitely blue in those in the iris there's definitely blue in the iris if you can see that and you can think about that and use a light light gray instead of a white uh, when you're going for a highlight this guy is on our youtube channel uh, it's just youtube.com slash living felt it's absolutely free all of the uh you can watch me needle felt this um we do one eye in real time which takes 45 minutes so grab some coffee <laughs> and the other eye we do speed fast and um he's not super uh, there's he's not super involved or detailed but it was just an example and i used indigo in this eye and we show that on video too now for those who want to start a little more toe in the water we have, someone just posted their fox last night. We have this fun uh, little kit for needle felting a 2D fox. Uh, he's based on a, an artist drawing um, and you can just do the face if you want, but it sort of gets you to play with blending colors it, and getting values and shades and also dealing a little bit more with long fur without having to look at a realistic picture of a fox. The drawing is more like a stepping stone for those of you who just want a little bit of a help. And we do have a kit which you know you can get everything in it to, to make the whole thing. And we have one for uh, a cardinal too and a robin which was a 3D video. I mean it was a video it's not um, it's a supply kit but the kit doesn't have instructions the cardinal and the fox do so if you just want to get started with that 2d this is all working again with our mc1 batting this is a real toe in the water project anybody can do it if i can do it you can do it i promise <laughs> i promise i promise so i wanted to show those as a little bit of inspiration um and to cap off what we looked at today